Let's begin by talking a little bit about the purpose of the Z-Modeler brush, some of the scenarios where we might want to use it, and then we'll jump in and start looking at actions, targets, and modifiers. So let's jump into ZBrush here. So Z-Modeler fills one of the holes that has kind of been in ZBrush, and that is sort of the low poly box modeling type of a workflow. You know, if you wanted to create very clean, hard surface pieces like this, if you were able to do it, they would be fairly dense unless you went in and kind of retopologized them. But there wasn't a really good low poly sort of workflow. If you were going to do something like that, you'd probably bring it in from another application. And so Z Modeler really fills that hole and it does it in a very unique uh, way that I think once you get used to kind of working with it, it's going to be really, really cool. Um, I've done low poly modeling um, and just, you know, box modeling before. Um, for many, many years, and doing it in ZBrush with this Z modeler has really been different, but it's actually a lot of fun. So we'll take a look um, at how we can start to, to build things like this. Okay, as you can see, all these sort of hard surface pieces. Now you could come in and use Shadow Box to kind of use masks and, and create some of this, but it's going to be very dense versus working on a low res mesh. It can be a lot less intimidating, and you have a lot fewer polygons to have to, to think about. Okay, so thinking about when we would use a Z modeler, um, if we were building up a, a low res mesh that needed a specific topology, or if we wanted to do a box modeling of a uh, of a low res piece that we're going to then, you know, add detail to, hard surfaces are going to lend themselves really well to this. But you can also use it for uh, if you're building low res characters and you've got, you know, you want to build in the the loops. You can do that very very quickly. So let's let's start by just taking a look at this. And so I'm going to switch over really quickly to just a cube. Um, and I'm just going to make that a, a poly mesh. And we'll go to our wireframe here. Poly frame. So this is not really uh, a low res mesh, but um, we'll take a look in the next lesson at that. I just want to show you how this works. So what we would do is activate it. And it's so just a brush. So we come over to brushes. And it's going to be right down here, Z modeler. So if you hit the Z key, it's going to be M. Okay, so you could go B, Z, M to activate it. And so you'll notice as we hover over this cube, we get different text, different bits of text that indicates what we can do, and also different highlights. So if we hover over actually a polygon, this tells us that this is going to cube mesh a poly, which doesn't mean anything to us right now. But if we hover over a point, it says this is going to move points by the brush radius. So if I were to click on that, I'd be able to move that point. If you hover over an edge, it says we're going to be able to insert an edge loop. And it gives you an indication of what the, the modifier keys for that are. Alt will delete the edge loop. Shift will uh, use constant width. Okay, so how do we change and access these different settings based on what we're hovering over? Well, to do that, with the Z modeler active, we'll hit the space bar. Okay, let me actually pull the uh, our interface down a little bit so we can see what we're doing here. So if I hold down the space bar, depending on what we're hovering over, you'll get a different set of options. So edges, polygons, points. And you can go in, and I'm just uh, continuing to hold down the space bar. As soon as I let go of the space bar, it's going to disappear. But we can choose what we want to do when we click on a polygon. So it was set to Q-Mesh, which we'll talk about in the next lesson, but you could set it to Mask or Inset or Extrude. So this area is what it's going to do when you click. The target area is what selection of polygons it's going to apply that to. So we could say just whatever single polygon that I've got selected, or you can set it to things like polygroups or poly loops, so that when you do these actions, they'll be applied to a specific set of polygons versus just one polygon. And there are lots of different ways we can set that up. Okay, and then on some of these, you'll also have modifiers down here. Okay, so we would set what we want to do here and then perform it on the mesh. Same thing for the point. So come into the point, let's say, instead of move, we want to split. Okay, and then you would click on that point. In this case, I've still got move selected. So I've got QMesh selected on a single poly. So if I click that, it'll pull it out and create a new poly group. 
Okay. So that's how we're going to activate it. It's going to be a brush. We want to make sure that we have a polygon selected. That's how it's going to work with a polygon object. But in the next lesson, let's take a look at using QMesh. We'll take a look at some of the uh, primitives that come with ZBrush that you can quickly change any poly mesh to uh, to start working with. And then we'll look at the QMesh action and how we can start to, to work with that. So we'll do that next.